My name is Kainton the Genius, and today we are going to perform simple logistic regression in Python in very few minutes. Now, take note of these things you need to know. You need to know about confusion matrix. We are going to display the confusion matrix for our data set. It tells you how good your model performs, the number of values classified correctly, the number of values classified wrongly. So this confusion matrix, we are going to talk more about it. Then we have the, the, the table of values or the values you are going to be working with. The output, which is y, uh, or y1 or y2, they have to be categorical, either yes, no, or 0 or 1. In this case, we have something called binary classifier. And make no mistake about it, when we talk about logistic regression, we are talking about classification. That is the kind of confusion we have in, in, in machine learning. A logistic regression, uh, logistic regression is simply classification simply because we are trying to classify output variable that is categorical 0 or 1. All right, let's go to do it. I would like to recommend you take some time to read through the, the, the steps here in my website. I've placed the, in the description box, you'll find a link to this page and all the procedure, all the codes are given here clearly for you to follow very easily. So let's just do it. And in this case, I've laid out the steps, just seven steps is needed. After performing logistic regression, you display the confusion matrix to see how well your regression model performed. Again, let me just tell you one or two things. Now, in this confusion matrix, we have, if you have Fn, this means false negative. It means quick values are negative and you classify them wrongly, right? So you classify them wrongly when they are actually they are positive values and you classify them as negative. That's false negative and it's very, very bad uh, in science. False negative uh, is called a type 2 error. We'll be talking about this a little later. Now let's go to Python and just do it. So first, we are going to import all the modules. We have a number of modules to import. So take some time to go through, to look through this model. Now I've explained what each of these models is for. From make classification, this is make classification module all the way to the last one, which is pandas. So I'm going to just paste it right here. You can see all the models we imported, about six different models, and I'm going to just run it. The next thing I'm going to do is to generate a data set. Now we don't have a data set. We are going to simply generate one. To generate a data set, we are going to use a function called make classification. Make classification function available in this module called um, called sklender data set so it helps you generate a data set uh, x y values where y is categorical which is binary data so i'm simply going to copy this function now we are specifying a number of parameters to the make classification functions uh, uh, to the make classification function and a parameter have to do with number of samples is 100 you can actually change it to maybe 200 or more and stuff like that. Uh, let's now run this as well. So you can decide to visualize your data. You can just check values for x, or you can say print x, just to see what the data looks like. So you can see x values generated, and you can see y values as well. If you print it, you see y values is categorical values, which is zero or one, and meaning we are talking about logistic regression. Let's visualize our data by doing a scatter plot just to see and appreciate that this data is actually a data for logistic regression. And I'm going to run this code. You can see that this is exactly uh, logistic regression data. So we can actually fit a linear regression line through this data. All right, so the next thing we want to do is to split this data set. Of course, you know that in machine learning, you always need to split your data set into training data set and test data set. So what it means is part of this data, we, we are going to use it, 70% of this data, we are going to use it to train the data, uh, to, the mod, to train the model, and the remaining 30%, basically the X values without the Y, we are going to use it as test, test data set to feed it into the model and allow the model to predict the values of y. All right, so at this point, I'm going to just split the data set into x train, y train, x train, x test, y train, y test. So these are basically when you split the data, 
we have the x values and the y values for the training data set and the test data set. So I'm going to run it at this point. If you want, you can take a look by printing out what these data sets are simply to see how many they are. Or we can just say, uh, let me insert one cell. Let me see. Oh no, I, I actually want to insert a cell below. So insert a cell below. Okay, good. So I want to see the shape of the training data set. So I can say x train dot shape just to see how many data or how many observations are there. So if I say dot shape, okay, shape is not callable. So just remove the, 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 the bracket. So you have 75. It means that for the test, we have 25 values for the test, 75 for training. All right, let's now perform logistic regression. But before then, we are going to fit. We are going to fit the regression. Uh, we are going to create a regression object and fit that regression object through the data set. So there are two things we are doing here. We are creating an object called log rate equal to logistic regression. This is logistic regression, similar to linear regression, but this is logistic. And then we use the logistic regression object to fit our data. And we are fitting our data, we are actually trying to train the model using the, the training data set that has been provided. I'm going to simply run it, and you see that it has outputs here. You can see iteration, 100 iteration, and the few things mentioned, for, for they are not really important. All right, so our model is ready. This object called logreg is our model. So when you are seeing somebody saying he's building a model or a classifier or stuff like that, he's simply building an object like this that have, has, have been trained using a particular data set. Now we are going to use this model to make prediction. Now we also have the coefficient of the model uh, in case of linear reg um, logistic regression let me just try it to show you that the coefficients are actually useful in case you want. So you have f of x is equal to 1 over 1 plus e to the power of beta 0 plus beta 1 x. So this beta 0 and beta 1 are the coefficient of the coefficient and intercepts or the coefficient of the regression model. Now I'm not going to print it because I'm not calculating anything. So let's now make prediction using the model. So, so I'm going to copy this and just paste it right here. But in this case, I'm using LR. So let me just change it to log reg. As you can see, log reg, the one I have here. So if you are using LR, you need to be consistent. And this here, and a typo, because if I have log reg here, it has to also be log reg here and log reg right here. All right, so let's use the, the test data set, the S, X test, to predict the corresponding values for Y. So now we have, I'm, I'm running it. Okay, so we now have Y predicted. So we are using the S test data set to predict corresponding Y values. But now let's see how good our regression model did. Now, I want you to take note of this because we are talking about the confusion matrix. We want the false negative to be as low as possible, false positive to be low as well. So anything false has to be low. Later, we are going to be talking about the, 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 the ROC, the receiver operating characteristic curve. So it comes, it comes from here. All right, so let's display the confusion matrix. I'm going to take this. This is what you use to display the confusion matrix. And then we try to interpret the confusion matrix as well. So let me just take out this redundant the test I have here. All right, so let me run this. All right, so you can see we have 11, uh, 11 true positives and 14 true uh, negative. So we actually don't have any wrong classified classification and our model performed great, so great, because we have zero false positive and zero false negative. So this mo model actually seems to be 100% accurate in the classification. So this is how to perform logistic regression in Python. And I'd like to recommend you read up the notes, uh, try to read up the notes, try to do a little calculation by yourself and try to read up the interpretation of the, of the, of the graph of the confusion matrix. So I'm gonna stop here. I'd like to recommend you 
you subscribe to my channel, if you've not subscribed, hit the subscribe button below. In, in that case, you will motivate me to keep making these lessons. And we see you in the next class.